Hello, just a quick announcement before this video starts. Um, after uploading, the algorithms spotted a possible copyright violation, uh, which is fine, that happens. Um, I've filed a dispute and hopefully the copyright owners will agree that it's fair use. Um, I've had it happen before with the Barnabas, Barnabas Nagy video about the time travellers. There were clips of film in there from the film called They Live. Um, that was automatically dis um, raised as a potential copyright. I disputed it and the copyright holders kindly agreed and the video was released. So in this case, what I've done is I have removed the clip that's under dispute. And if I win the dispute, I will re-upload the full video. The video should still make sense. It's just that it covered two sets of people and now it only covers one. Anyway, I hope you enjoy. Mr. Sensible. Today I thought we'd have another change of speed. We'll have a look at something that terrifies people. We'll have a look at vampires. Everyone's heard of them, everyone's seen the, the Peter Cushing movies, everyone's seen Twilight, apart from me. Not really my sort of thing. But anyway, I digress. Apparently there are some real, live, vampires out there. Today we're going to meet Julia Caples, a 45 year old mum of three from Pennsylvania who thinks she's a vampire. Roll VT. <laughs> her fascination with blood began as a young girl during her first kiss. Well, fail already Julia. You can see a nice reflection of yourself in the mirror. Have you never, why have you even got a mirror? What good is it supposed to do you? Well, sorry guys, I, th I thought she might um, be a bit more of a debunking challenge than that. Never mind, let the weirdness continue. First kiss. I kissed him really hard and I bit him on the lip. <laughs> it was my natural instinct to bite him because for some reason I associated uh, that, that sensuality with blood. And I expect most people's natural inclination is to shout, Oh no, it's a weirdo, and run away. Needless to say, he never kissed me again. But Julia was hooked and wanted more. As time went by and meeting fellow vampire fanatics became easier. Well, I suppose this is before Tinder for Vampires took off, was it? Julia eventually married her ex-husband, Donald, in a vampire-themed wedding. We had a special ceremony, and it happened to be in a graveyard. When we made our vows, we consecrated our love for each other by sharing. Sharing vows? Sharing rings? By sharing blood. But when their 11-year-old son, Alexia, arrived, the couple decided one of them had to step away from their bloody lifestyle. Hold on. I thought if you're a vampire, you're a vampire forever. You can just decide suddenly not to be now? To ensure he had a balanced upbringing. A balanced upbringing? I did. So she didn't have to. But despite their careful parenting, Alexia is starting to notice his mum's strange hobby. Is he a bright lad? Is it all the candles? Is it the skulls in the living room? Or is it the fact that you keep trying to say to him, do you fancy a bite to eat? It's kind of weird. Sounds like he's a bright lad. I'm starting to think he's a vampire. The couple also have an older daughter. I find it rather disgusting to begin with. I'm absolutely afraid of losing my mom to her lifestyle. Regardless of the criticism she faces from loved ones and strangers, Julia says she's careful. They have to get blood tests, you know, to make sure they're not carrying, you know, uh, blood-borne diseases or, or, you know, AIDS or HIV or, or any of that. Not much point being a vampire, is it? If you can just decide not to be one. If you have to worry about catching some blood-borne disease. Well, what, what exactly are the benefits? I, I thought the benefit was you're immortal, but now you're worried about catching some blood <laughs> Oh 
my. But the health risks aren't enough to deter Julia, who drinks blood as regularly as she can. So, um, are you ready to go? Absolutely. Because I am really thirsty. Okay, I'm going to take your shirt off. So what drives Julia to continue her bizarre practice? Um, being a total whack job, perhaps? Is there a secret property to blood that makes vampires age more slowly, like in the movies? Well, obviously not, as she's been a vampire since she was a teenager, I think she said. And now she's 45 and looks it. My aging process is seems to be outwardly much slower than people who don't drink blood. Um, not so much. You look at least your age. But when I drink, when I feed off a, a, a person and drink their blood, I feel uh, stronger. I feel I feel um, healthier. Um, I feel empowered. I feel more beautiful than any other time. I'm also extremely healthy. I have no health problems. I have an abundance of energy all the time. Thank you so so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, she may be a vampire, but at least she's polite. But she's not the only one. Just a short vampire's flight away, we visit England. So there we are. Real life vampires, both in the US and in the UK. Who'd have thunk it? Anyway, I want to thank you all once again for joining me. Now I want to give a quick shout out to a friend of mine, Spike, also known as Steaming Cup of Reason. He does a great format show, a Friday night mega mirror, where he takes uh, a new creator and mirrors two or three of their videos and interviews them so you can get to know them a bit. He's a great guy. I was on there recently and I really enjoyed myself. I'm going to put a link to his channel. I'll tell you what, I'm going to put it up here. And I suggest you have a look at a few of his videos. He's been interviewing some interesting people. So hop over to his channel, have a watch of some of his mega mirrors, give him a few likes, a little bit of love, and subscribe. He deserves an awful lot more than he's got. And I'd like to say thank you, Spike. It was a great show. As always, big thanks to my patrons, Elizabeth Schneider, Frank Kelly, and Simon D. If you want to support me in the same way, just hop over to patreon.com and search Mr. Sensible. Thank you, guys. Anyway, the Conspirator Cheese Awards is still running. You have until the end of this month, August, to place your votes. So go have a look at the Conspirator Cheese Award nomination show. I'll put a link down in the description for that, and you can vote anonymously. I look forward to seeing you all again. If you haven't subscribed, click Mini Me down in the corner. And until next time, stay sensible. Grrr.